I think we should go now to something that's going to introduce our next guests. There's no one reason we lost. Our message was weak. Our ground game was insufficient. We weren't inclusive. We're, we were behind in both data and digital. And our primary and debate process needed improvement. Reince Prabus, chair of the Republican National Committee at the National Press Club, announcing the autopsy, if you will, for the Republican Party, a change in message, a change in process, a couple of different things. Call it a remake, call it what you want, but we're going to call it a recovery plan. Alan Kelly, CEO, founder of Playmaker Systems and author of The Elements of Influence, is also an adjunct professor at George Washington University. Good morning, Tim. Joins us here this morning to talk about these plays, and and uh, well, it was interesting to uh, to hear Mr. Priebus. By the way, just as a piece of information, I was talking to Craig Shirley on the air this week, and he said the original intent of this study was to find out why the consultants were pulling in so much money and got so few results for the Republicans. <laughs> and they sort of this this was a way of I, I wouldn't necessarily say papering it over, but it was a way of just pointing, just sort of diverting from the fact that they didn't really get their money's worth, and they're still wondering where all this money went to some of these consultants out there. That said, you have used in what you've been writing on PlaymakerSystems.com, and for people who don't know, Alan has something called the periodic table, the standard table of influence. It's sort of like the t- table of of um, of chemicals, but it has plays and then alternate uh, responses to those plays. But you you talked about. Uh, a sophomoric name that you call the Growth and Opportunity Project for the Republicans, yep. backed by a skillful lantern play on the obvious and embarrassing slide of the GOP and its plank. All right, let's talk about lanterns. What's a lantern play? Well, it's a term that I've uh, taken from uh, in honor of Chris Matthews, who I think coined it in his book Hardball, uh, where he talks about shining a, a lantern or shining a light on your problems mm-hmm. uh, proactively. Uh, and I think to some degree that is what's happened here with this this program and in this report that was commissioned that you saw whatever motives and however whatever its genesis. Uh, a lantern is uh, is when you uh, volunteer uh, ideas or information that are otherwise not known uh, about yourself or your plank or your platform or your position. Um, so that you essentially get the bad news out there first. Mm-hmm. Think about Herman Cain, who had a, a small cascade of affairs coming down uh, and beat them, beat that news to the punch um, during his campaign to say, well, I have had affairs and here's what they are. He did that to defuse a ticking bomb of sorts. So it's a it's a proactive strategy. It's a it's a proact it's a strategy that you use proactively. Usually when you're on the defensive. Yeah. Well, rule, like rule number one, I always thought of it as news operations that I've run. Rule number one, if there's something bad about your company, you better be the first on the air with it. Because Usually. otherwise you lose your credibility. But in uh, particularly in this country where uh, where law and, and litigiousness reign, uh, it is probably the number one play, if you will, that is hated by lawyers. Because it establishes voluntarily culpability. Mm-hmm. That's never good. In well, the mind no, you of don't have who to, has to take something I mean, if to, you're, uh, if to you're, a court if, of law. If you're being if you're being investigated, I mean, it's not a, 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 it's not necessarily saying you're culpable. And I don't want to get too far afield, but I mean, the point is, is if you're if you've got a bad piece of news that's going to come out anyway, you might as well be first if you're a news operation. You might so, as well be, and yeah. so it's becoming more and better and better understood. Uh, and Tylenol, I think, did a great job with that. Well, and that's uh, the people at uh, Johnson and Johnson right. are, are are. I know that, it goes I, a long ways away. I mean, I. Yeah. I People in the other room are looking at me like two heads. What time? I know. <laughs> I know. Let's know Nixon jokes. You know, <laughs> we can't do that. Okay. Um, anyway, back to the idea of the strategy. All right. So they're, they're laying a lantern out there, but how many people want to see what the light is being shown upon? And I guess what what is the you know the response to this? You have you say Democrats ran labels, yes, calling the report an autopsy, yeah. and I think Reince Priebus actually used that word too. But GOP loyalists were forced to take one of two distasteful routes: support it, look like a sporting pawn, or ignore it and look like a poor sport. That's right. Now you say Eric Hanter bear hugged the plan. Explain the bear hug. Well, you know, the, uh, if if the chairman of the GOP comes out and says we have flaws, we have warts, there are things we have to talk about, we have some shortcomings, then then the rank and file has two rather uncomfortable choices. They can they can diss it, you know, and sort of deposition it or, or not go in line and look like it's sour grapes. I think Kevin McCarthy all but did that, saying, mm-hmm. "Oh, we don't really need to be told." This is Kevin by McCarthy, report. by the way. Just- we ain't got no badges. <laughs> we don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. I think that was him, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, very good. Right. Um, 
Yeah, Mongo, no, yeah. That um, actually was the original, by the way, Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Oh, so okay. That wasn't even that oh, wasn't sorry. even Blazing Saddles. I went okay. one extra level just for you. <laughs> but the other choice is that uh, is that then if you if you don't want to deposition it, then you have to kind of go with it, and that's uncomfortable too. Though I give credit to Eric Cantor. Who, who who said who, who kind of did a, a, a combination of plays a bear hug or a recast and said basically you know that's great and hey this will be uh, our, our new way of recasting ourselves and charging in and creating the new Republican majority mm-hmm. and so he put a happy face on it but when you run a lantern it's generally counterintuitive um, it's generally not liked by lawyers and it generally will put your constituents in a tough position and it's going to invite in uh, your rivals to go ahead and, and essentially pig pile uh, on the problem that you have, uh, by your own volition, exposed. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, of course, the opposition in Washington, D.C. is always happy to do. Yes, they are. <laughs> Very pleased to see but, that door open and take a step that's inside. Right. But, there's, but there's actually an enormous upside to a lantern in that, again, you are controlling uh, the nature or the timing or the... Uh, uh, ferocity of sort of the explosion, if you will, and and this helps to get a player, the GOP in this case, on its own footing and finding its own voice and moving ahead proactively. I, I actually give them, you know, a, a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. Um, now, earlier you talked about, and you're reading the uh, the news there. You talked about, uh, I think, a heat map mm-hmm. uh, that somebody of the pre- cosmos, yeah, of the cosmos. Right. Well, what we can take, what we can do is we can take the table of influence strategies here, um, and we can we can derive a kind of a heat map, if you will, or a strategy signature of any particular constituency or group. Speaking of which, you mentioned in that in testing plays, and you just say it's not in the DNA of conservatives to. Ask. Interesting. I hadn't really thought of it that way. I don't think so. Uh, it's hard. It's it's hard to put uh, m- anyone's politics aside as, as you as you put to, as you make judgments about these plays. But it doesn't feel. But in the testing category, which is the lowest engagement, the most subtle of all influence plays, you've got uh, plays like trial balloons and pings, which is a very subtle reference. Uh, you've got pauses. I don't think that is from what we've seen in the character of of conservatives to do that. They have such an indomitable self regard. They have such inborn confidence that it's not really in their nature. Rigidity in the in 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 the uh, upholding of principles is considered a virtue. That's right. And there's a there's a scholar at the University of Maryland named James uh, Grunig who would look at this and think, well, that's one way. Uh, communication and it's symmetric communication. I mean, that's that's he would say that that's how the Republican body uh, communicates or talks or thinks or influences. In other words, they're talking at you. They're not. It's not necessarily a listening process. So if that's true, then I don't think that testing is exactly where Republicans hang out. Okay. So where do they hang out? Oh, they hang out in two two subclasses of the system. And there are seven uh, in within the framing mm-hmm. and within pressing. And framing has all the classic uh, things you'd know about. It's, it's uh, labeling and screening and recasting and filtering. It's just the constant ordering and shuffling and editing of information and ideas. That's Very, the new message that some people were talking about. Right? Sure. Yeah. That's, that's just, right. They're, they're putting it in their own terms. And it's mid-spectrum. It's sort of... Marco Rubio sort of played on that. He said, we don't need a new message. We, our message is America. America works. Yeah. That would be called a recast. <laughs> Um, and the other place where they hang out is in pressing. Uh, there, there's a play we've sometimes uh, uh, chuckle about called a Fiat, and I don't mean the car. It's mm-hmm. like it's like by dictate. There's a play called the Challenge, which is to sort of exhort uh, the masses to a direction. There's a play called a Draft, where you're where like NASCAR, you're following and then you're planning to pass. And the Draft is very very central mm-hmm. to this particular plan because they're saying, okay, we'll take a hit, but then we're going to follow and then we're going to move around. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, what I see, though, in this certain heat signature, this heat map for the GOP, is uh, is sort of startling because it's very narrow. It's very middle of the road. It's focused in two of the seven uh, subclasses, and altogether, it's a little less than half of the influence plays that we know exist. So, if a political party is only dealing with less than half, if they're only dealing with, in this case, ten, eleven, twelve plays. Then that means they're they're singing from half the scales 
in a song sheet, mm-hmm. or half the notes in a song sheet. They got they're, a six-man football team. They are. That's right. They're Instead automatically disabled, right. and I think there's a lesson in there for the GOP. They they have to do more testing. Well, they part of the problem more. is that they're, yeah. they're trying to influence, but they're trying to influence each other right now, aren't they? Isn't that part of the problem? Because we have this split right now. I mean, you have in here callouts is one of the typical plays, you know, provoking plays. And what have we had with Senator John McCain and Rand Paul, two Republicans who have called each other? some unusual names, um, you know, Rand Paul calling some of the existing senators, the existing Republican Party members, uh, moss, moss covered. Uh, this is it's not just about anti, you know, going against the opposition. It's it's about being within your own party, having some problems. Well, the concept you're getting there is it is what I call scope and strata. Uh, where, where it, in, in this discussion of the past 10 minutes, we've talked about looking at this problem at a certain kind of magnification, if you will. We're looking at the, prod, the, the, the GOP party broadly. But now if we want to zoom in, if you will, or, or ratchet up the magnification, then you're right. We can start to look at inter-party squabbles and inter-party plays that are happening. You don't really need a magnifying glass. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's no. But, but I'm saying you go just a little bit deeper. We can right. go deeper and deeper. We can go into, you know, we can go into the office of... McCain or the offense into in, into Rand, uh, and we can start looking at, at macro. If you have that information, you can you can zoom the system all the way in mm-hmm. and look at it at a much grainier level, if yeah. you wish. That's and that's ab- absolutely part of the fun of it, usually, because at some point you usually find a family association or something that somebody was angry about three years ago that still is is in his craw, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yes. All right. So, well, you've given us a lot to think about, a lot to chew on. Uh, for people, you got this online, right? Playmakersystems dot com. If people want to read your yeah, we have a blog called Plays for the Presidency. It's at our our, our website called Playmaker Systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, you can also find us at Playmaker Allen. That's the tweet handle. Um, and you, and that's A L A N. A Allen, A L N. That's the only way to spell it. At Allen at, at Playmaker Allen. Um, and I'm looking forward to if <laughs> listeners don't know this, uh, having. Uh, Tim in our class on Monday. That's right. Uh, I'm going to, I need some credits uh, to get through, so I'm going to be listening in closely. No, I'm actually supposed to talk, and I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to say. Now, we have 16 brilliant graduate students. Uh, this Even is at, worse uh, for at me. George Washington University, and they have just been through midterm hell, and they'll be ready to grill you. <laughs> talk about plays. All right. We'll look forward to it. Alan, it's always great. Thanks for coming in. See you soon.